If you're looking for a way to really up your packaging and find a way to make it more playful, memorable and unique, then illustration is a really good way to do that. Illustrating packaging is one of my favorite things to do and I work in a tool called Procreate on my iPad. This makes it super easy to experiment with brushes, with different textures, and you basically create a digital artwork that you can then use for print as well. So I thought I would share my process of going from sketching out the idea, looking at the packaging requirements and making sure that the illustration is going to fit both the brand that you're working with and the exact specific packaging requirements that you have to do for print. So we'll start all the way from the concept and sketch uh, to actually exporting it and putting it into the rest of your packaging design in Adobe programs. So the first thing I want to look at is the actual layout of the packaging itself. So since we're going to focus on illustration today, I went ahead and created this layout with all the different text and I made these little kind of shaded boxes where I would like to put the illustration. So when I create these packaging layouts, I want to make sure that information is placed in a way where it's easy to see the hierarchy. So like in this case, we want to see what the flavor is and we're going to work with a chocolate cookie mix. So basically one of these uh, boxes that you get with mixes of flour and sugar and things like that, that all you have to do is mix with eggs and milk. The idea behind this brand is for it to be really fun and playful to do with your kids. So I want to create illustration that fits that theme and feels really playful. So we're going to work with this illustration that is going to be this kind of arch on the front. Uh, and we're also going to create some smaller illustrations to decorate the rest of the packaging. So on the back, we're going to have a purely decorative illustration that's going to be behind the baking instructions introduction and the serving instructions. Uh, and on the side of the packaging, we're going to put two different icons for uh, making sure it's easy to bake. So kind of like a tip or a selling point. And we're also going to show that it's vegan. Since we're going to be using this for print, we want to make sure that we're actually setting up our document right from the beginning in Procreate. So what you want to do is to create an artboard that is, I think, at least three or four times larger than what you actually will be working with. Secondly, uh, you need to make sure that it's at least 300 dpi just to make sure that the quality of the artwork is going to look nice and you're not going to have pixelation. And then lastly, uh, we want to make sure that the color profile is set to CMYK. So I work in Procreate on my iPad. Uh, I really like sketching this way because it makes it flexible for me to tweak the illustration as I'm going along. So I don't have to like erase and try to redraw things over it, uh, but I can just kind of move the layout around. And I'm gonna show you some of the tips and tricks that I use in Procreate to make sure the sketching process is really nice. Um, the first thing I'm doing here is just creating this basic outline of the arch itself and this is going to be like the reference point for me. The next step is to start sketching out the different ingredients that are going to be in this packaging. And my thinking process of this illustration is to make it a really playful scene where the bergamot, which is the kind of orange type fruit, is the focal point. So whenever I'm creating an illustration, I want there to be one really obvious point that draws your eye in. So in this case, that's gonna be the main ingredient, the bergamot. What's really nice about Procreate is that you can highlight areas and you can resize them and move them around. And so that just facilitates the sketching process a ton. You can also do things like uh, holding down your finger to make sure that you're creating uniform shapes like uh, ovals or squares and things like that. Since this is a baking product, I thought it would be fun to create it as a series. So if they want to have, let's say, different flavors in the future, it would be a really easy way for them to keep the bold design at the bottom with the cookie mix um, as the kind of repeating element that comes back for every flavor and then they can have the ingredient like the bergamot or strawberries or white chocolate or things like that as the different ones that are showing the focal point. What I like to do when I'm creating illustrations is also to start layering in elements once I have the most basic shapes there. So once the bowl is there and I have the bergamot fruit, then I'm trying to look at creating like uh, the orange wedges or creating little things like chocolates or leaves and things like that that are gonna build out the actual illustration complexity. 
One thing you can also do is to use the liquify tool in Procreate to actually start to change the illustration, uh, how it appears. So, so you can move things around, move lines around, and just make sure that the illustration actually works really well. Um, I also try to think about not only reflecting the ingredients, but reflecting them in a way where it becomes really playful. So the way we're going to do this is, <laughs> even though the bowl is something you would see on a kitchen bench, I have this kind of line behind it as a kitchen bench, but it's actually going to be grass. So it's going to be kind of like a mix between a, a kitchen and this kind of like really playful outdoor scene. One thing that I find really important when you're sketching is just to go back and review and zoom in and out so that you have that kind of uh, macro scale, but you also have the perspective from afar. Uh, it's going to help you a lot to make sure you find which parts are working in your layout and where you might need to add more details. So here I'm just cleaning up the illustration a little bit, even though this is just the sketching stage. I still want to make sure that I'm making life easy for myself when I'm going to be tracing this later. So I don't like the sketch to be too rough at this stage because that means that it's going to be a lot more work for me once I actually start creating the outline that I'm going to be working with. Uh, in this style, I'm going to be creating um, an illustration that is very kind of playful and it's a mix between uh, what works well for parents who are going to be buying the product, but also like really fun for the kids who are going to be creating this uh, baking together with their parents. And so I want to include things like I'm going to put a little bird on this branch here that goes together with the ingredients so that it becomes like this very layered playful effect. Um, and I think this is one of those things where packaging illustration can really bring so much personality um, and it's really fun to be able to play with it like this. I think if you're new to illustration, it can feel a little bit intimidating to know like what to illustrate or feeling like you have to do a lot of versions of something. And I really want to encourage you to not worry about making things perfect at the sketching stage. Even though I said I like the sketch to be quite nice and neat before I move forward, sometimes I end up creating like three or four different versions of something and compare them just to see which layout works best and seeing which of the versions are going to work best in all different aspects. So here, for example, you'll notice that actually I, I think that it would be nice to mirror this little splash of the ingredients uh, that we have on the right hand side, but the leaf is blocking the area on the left hand side. So I'm actually removing the uh, other leaf on the left hand side. Um, and what I'm doing here is I'm just creating um, basically a new layer with the same exact design so that I can delete the area that I'm unsure about, but I still have a backup version in case I would actually like to keep it the way it was. This is also a really nice feature of Procreate that you're actually able to do this. So uh, now that I've finished the overall sketch, I'm going to be filling in a background color in the actual shape that we're going to be using. Um, and then we're going to be uh, creating the actual clean outline. Now, this is something that you don't have to do if you're not using an outline illustration style. But in my case, I'm going to be keeping the outline as a way to kind of create this more playful art style. I use uh, the dry brush in Procreate, which is one of the free brushes. And I really, really love it because it brings so much texture to the artwork. Uh, but I used to use the HB pencil and that one had a lot of see-throughness. And so I really prefer the dry brush because you still get kind of a solid line. So this is something you can also play around with. Once I have the outline ready, I like to be able to block out the colors as a plan. So this is not me coloring in the illustration the way it actually will be in the future or as the finished product, but it's actually just testing out how the different colors will work together on the page. So I have a lot of color palettes that I've been playing around with for a long time, but you can also go on Pinterest or other places and look for color palettes that you think would work well and build out your own as well. 
So as you can see, I'm kind of adjusting and testing out different shades and I'm not trying to be very perfect with the way I'm filling this in because the purpose is just to see that the colors are gonna work big picture. Uh, instead of me spending lots of time to kind of color everything in perfectly and then realizing that the colors don't really work well. So um, I'm going for a really soft palette that is still quite colorful. So uh, colors that are a little bit more dusty, um, but that will still be very cute and playful together. Um, so lots of pinks and kind of more yellowy greens to fit with the bergamot flavor. Then I move on to actually coloring in the artwork the way I would like it to be. When I'm doing that, I am of course a lot more careful the way I'm coloring it in and I'm making sure that I'm staying with the lines uh, and keeping like that right balance of texture with also making sure you're not getting too much see-throughness. Since we're gonna be cutting this shape out and placing it on the packaging, I'm not too fussy about the background color that's gonna be like beneath all of this. Uh, but if let's say you were cutting it out and placing it on a really really dark background or a shade that feels really drastically different from the white that I'm using just on the artboard behind it, uh, I think it would be a good idea for you to make sure that you are actually creating that as the layer as well so that your background is actually matching the shade of your packaging at the end. Because even though you're cutting it out, when you're using a textured brush like this, it means that you can get little areas of see-throughness, so it can be good to have those matching from the start. And so uh, I like to sometimes have multiple layers here when I'm working because it just creates a lot of an easier experience to color in because you don't have to be so perfect about staying in the lines. Um, what I'm doing now is to try to create a little bit more depth in the illustration. So I'm adding like different clouds and I'm adding little details. And the next step is to add in all of the texture and details that I like to make the artwork feel a lot more alive. Um, this is one of those stages that I find the most fun because it really makes the illustration come to life. It's also a great space now that you're getting so far into the illustration to start making edits if something isn't feeling right. So in this case, I felt like the, the wing of the bird just was a little bit too complicated. So I decided instead to use the textures to create that effect and just simplified the outline and then adjusted my coloring to fit that as well. So now that we've been adding all the details, I just thought I would show you a little bit what the artwork looks like. So you have these little, little detail and textures that just make it a lot more fun. So we have these little stars going on, these little feathers on the bird. And at this stage, it's time to add the shading. So what I like to do is to add a new layer and pull down the opacity to like 34% and add it to multiply and then create it as a clipping mask. Now this means that when you're shading, you're actually creating a different color for each part of the illustration that has an, a different base color. Um, so it sounds abstract, but I'll show you. So basically I use a medium dark color. So I use like a dark pink in this case to match the illustration. And when you pull it over, you will see that it'll, because it's at a multiply effect, it actually picks up the color of the, of the block underneath. So this is a really, really great way to do shading because it saves so much time and you don't have to actually like worry about keeping the details on top of a specific little illustration or color, but you can do it for the whole artwork at the same time. I learned this tip from a creator called Fizz and Flourish here on YouTube. So if you want more illustration tips, they also have so much helpful stuff that I really enjoy their studio vlogs. I really enjoy this stage because it makes the illustration all of a sudden become so much more multi-dimensional and it just becomes a really really fun way to see your artwork start building up. So now that we have the artwork ready, it's time to export it. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and hide the background. Now since this is a PDF that we're going to be exporting, since we're going to use it for print, you don't actually have to remove the background, but I do it anyway since Sometimes I like to export it for, let's say, using online or as like a social media post, and then I can export it as a PNG. But in this case, I'm just going to choose export as a PDF and save it to my Dropbox. Once I have it finished, um, I actually just pull it into Illustrator and I crop it out by doing tracing the shape with a pen tool and doing command seven. 
And the reason that I don't like to use a PNG file is because it can get a little messy with color profiles. So I prefer to have the artwork set up in CMYK to start with and then to actually use it as a PDF that we crop out. Now, if you're illustrating the full packaging and not just the shape like this, you actually don't have to worry about doing the cutting out because you can basically create the artwork size that you're going to be using in the end. So once I have the illustration there, I start playing around with things like the background color to make sure that it's matching and really works well together. I like to do the illustration first because it really guides the rest of the artwork. And so the way I have this set up is I've got two uh, layers, you can see on the right hand panel, where I've got the actual dye lines that I'm going to be working with on a separate layer so that I can turn that on and off and see and make sure that everything stays within the areas that we want. So I think this is one of those things where you always have to consider readability and accessibility. So you don't want to have things where your text is too close in color to your backgrounds because it's really going to make it difficult for people to read. When you're printing, there can also be a tiny bit of bleeding. So that's something you also want to keep in mind. Um, so this is the final artwork that we ended up with. And so here I've added in those little icons and illustrated them in the same style. I've also added in some leaves and some ingredients on the back. And I decided to make it a little bit more playful by adding in these little stars kind of interspersed around the packaging. Um, I think it turned out super cute and I think it would be really fun for kids to pick up on the shelf and see as this kind of fun experience to do together with your family. Now you'll see that there's a lot of area on the top and on the sides around where we don't have a design and that's purely because it's an area where you would be printing or there would be overlap in the actual artwork. So lastly, I thought we would have a look at the packaging as it's mocked up. So this is how I like to show it to my client. I like to show both the mockup that we have where you can see the actual beautiful end result. And I also like to show them the dye lines just so that they can understand how it will all fit together. I hope you thought that was helpful. If you're curious about packaging in general, I'll put a video on the screen where you can learn a lot more about packaging from start to finish. So not just the illustration part, but getting the requirements from the client and printing and all that type of stuff. Thank you so much for watching. Really good luck with your projects and see you next time.